Now on Two Big Sticks. Twice the laughs, twice the information, twice the pant size. Hey, wait a minute, that doesn't sound right. This is Talk of the Town with Henry Hinton. News, laughs, community information, and all the knowledge you need to be the smartest one in the room. Unless you are in the same room as Henry, of course. Oh, shut up. This is Talk of the Town on 103.7 WTIB and 94.1 WNBU. All right, hour number two here on this Wednesday Talk of the Town. Trent McGee in for Henry this morning. Carly Swain with WITN to my left. Carly, good to have you in this morning. Always good seeing you. Three straight days, back to back to back. I know, and hey, guess who's going to be here tomorrow? Carly Swain. Yeah, yeah. It's a Swain week. Yeah, you guys are either really lucky or really not. No, no, no. (laughs) We're always lucky. I I would call it lucky. I would call it uh, privileged to have (laughs) you in every single day this week. So very good. Good to have you on board. Speaking of uh, this week, later on this week, coming up Friday, Talk of the Town will be live on location at Krispy Kreme, 300 East 10th Street. I've memorized the address now, having been there so many times. (laughs) We'll be live on location there. For uh, our Friday talk of the town. Do they do Easter donuts? And, you know, I don't know. But I feel I, like they I, do everything else, you know. They do I think Easter they, donuts, I yes. Th- they do? I thought that they yes. did. Now, mm. on this day, all day, Friday, March 27th, all at all thrisp, uh, oh, thrispy, at all three Krispy Kreme <laughs> locations, thrispy. <laughs> I'm just really excited right in now. In Goldsboro, Greenville, and Rocky Mount, $1 from every dozen donuts sold will be donated to the local American Red Cross. Awesome. And also on this Friday's Talk of the Town at Krispy Kreme, we're going to be sampling the new spring donuts. So huh? there's going to be a new spring yeah. donut. So it's colorful, very delicious. And uh, also the chick donut a cream filled donut dipped in yellow icing topped with granulated sugar and hard heart hand i cannot read this morning and hand decorated <laughs> like a baby chick let's do that one again topped with granulated sugar and hand decorated like a baby chick so it looks like a peep looks like a peep, peep, ah! peep, peep. and the delicious egg donut filled with chocolate cream and hand decorated with colored icing mm. and a chocolate iced ring with spring inspired sprinkles inside so i would call all those easter donuts yeah i think so that's sense. safe to so, say yeah all that coming your way friday on talk of the town and again don't forget that one dollar from every dozen soul will be donated to the local american red cross so come out and sample these delicious treats and take a dozen back with you to your office for your friends or children and support the American Red Cross. Or just swing them by the studio here. There, there you go. There you go. That too. Just that too. Thought. And not that you need to come by Krispy Kreme on a Friday because we're there, although you should. Go by there anytime you want to. I make at least two or three trips during the week. Do you know Matt Engelbrecht went by earlier this week? And uh, he was doing some some uh, morning show work with us this week, and uh, was the nicest guy ever. And he, I mean, if we were not all already friends at WITN, he just made us all best friends. Brought in a dozen Krispy Kreme donuts. Matt knows I mean, he, just, knows how, he knows how to pull the right string. Yeah, he yeah. does. He, he's that kind of guy. Knew what he was doing. Matt's that kind of guy. Matty Ice. <laughs> he is. Yeah, that would bring me closer to him too if he brought me donuts. Yeah, I'm with we're you BFFs. On that. Yeah. Uh, coming up in about uh, <laughs> seven minutes from now, we're going to speak um, with. Uh, via phone, uh, local chef and owner of a restaurant uh, that you've probably heard of, but if you haven't, uh, if you haven't, you'll find out more about it and why she's coming to Greenville. And I encourage you to go uh, and and eat here too. Uh, granted, I will say this: it is not here in Pitt County. It's not in Greenville, but uh, it's worth the short drive you will have to make because it's very, very good. That coming up in about uh, eight minutes from now. But first, we'll go to Carly Swain with the latest. And Carly, I know uh, right now the Greenville police uh, saying that the uh, the shooting that took place Sunday, uh, it's now a homicide investigation. Yes. Very sad story there. Of course, also, too, a uh, tractor trailer losing the wheel there on I-40. That's not good. All that more right now in your news update. Good morning. Good stuff. Good morning, Trent. Yeah, 43 degrees as you're stepping outside in Greenville this morning. 45 in New Bern. The time now, 8.09 on this Wednesday morning. Quick note on the tractor trailer wreck in Duplin County along I-40 near Warsaw, exit 373. Apparently, troopers are telling us that a tractor trailer lost a wheel. One vehicle hit that wheel and then debris shattered after the tractor trailer jackknifed. A couple other vehicles hit some debris. Thankfully, no injuries there. The road was closed westbound. All lanes and one lane eastbound closed for almost 
almost two and a half, three hours this morning. It has since been reopened, so travel through the area shouldn't be a problem for you. In other news this morning, an early morning gunfight left one man dead, two others charged with murder. Havelock police say they were called to the parking lot of the Havelock Inn on East Main Street for a shooting around 1240 Tuesday morning. They discovered James Gadette Jr. of Moorhead City had been shot multiple times. He later died. And the chief says Gadette and three men pulled up in a black SUV, all of them armed, when they began shooting at each other. The chief says one of the three men in the SUV, Anthony Hargett in ha of Havelock, was actually hurt. His wrist was hurt. He was charged with murder after being treated and released at the hospital. And earlier in the day, Tornez Hargett of New Newburn also charged with murder. Police say these two Harkets are actually cousins. The chief says they are still looking for a third man involved in this case. They've not named that third suspect at this point. On to that Greenville shooting now where we have new information from the police department. As police say a woman who was shot while she slept early Sunday morning in her home has now died. Greenville Police Interim Chief Ted Saul says that Gail Lanier passed away Monday night at Vida Medical Center. The shooting originally happened just before 4 o'clock in the morning on Sunday at 209B Pennsylvania Avenue. Saul says the 50-year-old woman was shot when a bullet came sailing through her bedroom window, hitting her in the head. Her home was hit multiple times by gunfire. Now, police do not believe that Lanier was the intended target of that attack. Detective Glenn Webb says there have been some drug investigations at that residence in the past. They are exploring a possibility that the murder was gang or drug related. Officers say they have a person of interest in the shooting. So far, though, no arrests have been made. Police tell us the man who shot and killed three people last month before being shot to death by law enforcement was in fact delusional and had been treated for mental issues. Tarboro police say Ian Sherrod had struggled with paranoid schizophrenic behavior in recent years, and it looks like that's what led up to the February 28th shootings. Investigators say Sherrod shot and killed George Dickens Jr. at a barber shop, then went on to a nearby trailer park and killed Ventura Sanchez and Ana Cruz Franco. Sherrod himself was shot and killed by a Tarboro officer and an Edgecombe County deputy after they say he pointed a weapon at them. Finally, this morning, a teen will be behind bars for 13 to 25 months after pleading guilty to shooting a gun towards a high school. Greenville DA Kimberly Robb says that 17-year-old Ciala Coombs pled guilty on Monday for a shooting at D.H. Conley High School. That was in April of 2014. He was actually a student at J.H. Rose at the time. Witnesses say they saw a gold SUV driving past the school along Worthington Road when the passenger reached his arm over the car's roof and fired shots in the school's direction. That's a look at your WITN News update on this Wednesday morning. Time now is 8-12. Trent, back to you. All right, Carly, thanks so much for that news update. Your weather forecast for today, a high of 70 degrees. Should see some sunshine. You might see some partly some cloudy skies to start today, but should make way for some sunshine later today with a high of 70. Lows tonight around 60 degrees. Get out uh, to Clark LeClaire. Should be a nice night for ECU and high point on the diamond. 630 is that first pitch for your Thursday. Warming up with a high of 80 degrees, a 50% chance of rain, lows around 54. And for your Friday, the rain chance decreasing, but still enough to, to bring some showers our way. 60% chance with a high of 58 and a low of 37. We'll take a time out here and come back and get to our first guest here in hour number two on this Wednesday, Talk of the Down. Stop making high interest payments and swap into a new Toyota with a lower interest rate at Greenville Toyota. During the One for Everyone sales event, get the lower interest rate and payments as low as $159 a month. Give Greenville Toyota just 15 minutes and we can lower your payment. What if you could make this or this with less of this and definitely less of this and without this? Let Ann show you how with this. A great taste without the guesswork. Add Ann's chicken, vegetable, ham, or beef base to a variety of dishes. Deviled eggs, potato salad, and even coleslaw are taken to a whole new level by using Ann's The One dressing. Or easily liven up your favorite meat or seafood with Ann's The One sauce. Homemade, made easy. Look for this label at your local grocer or annsdumplings.com for more ideas. When you're on the go, it's Trade Wilco. No matter where you go in Eastern Carolina, there's sure to be an attractive and always clean Trade Wilco Hess station nearby. For the absolute lowest prices on gas, groceries, and travel necessities, stop at any of the Trade Wilco Hess stations throughout Eastern Carolina. Keep your eyes on the road, but remember to look for the green and white Hess sign. The best part? No one supports the ECU Pirates more. So when you're on the go, it's Trade Wilco. Look at you two, taking a flying leap off the high dive of life and starting your own home business and nailing it. The term busy is just taking on a whole new meaning. At Shaw Floors, we love busy. It's why we work so hard to put a resilient floor beneath your feet that's as awesome as you are. 
Boyd's Carpet, 115 West Fire Towel Road in Winterville. Call them at 321-7066. Are you a bargain hunter always looking for the best deals in Greenville? Start your hunt on Saturday, April 25th at the St. James UMC Spring Fling Yard Sale. This massive yard sale opens at 6.30 and is the start of a day-long event with a plant sale, bake sale, craft bazaar, and live auction at 5. All proceeds benefit local charities, so come join our St. James family on April 25th at 2000 East 6th Street for unique finds, great bargains, and excellent food. For more information, call 752-6154 or visit STJ Connect. Connect.org. Uptown Greenville is the voice of the downtown. We exist to promote quality, cultural, residential, and economic development. I am Uptown. I am Uptown. I am Uptown. It's alive. Safe. It's awesome. A great place to work. We are Uptown. We are Uptown. We are Uptown. Student at East Carolina University, co-founder of eAudit.com. Sergeant with the Center City Unit. Owner of the Varsity Club. Our downtown has a name, and it's Uptown. I'm good like that. Yeah. Stop making high interest payments and swap into a new Toyota with a lower interest rate at Greenville Toyota. During the One for Everyone sales event, get the Greenville Toyota Advantage. Oil changes, tire rotations, and courtesy shuttle service for life. Rush over to Greenville Toyota today. Sixteen past the hour here on this Wednesday talk of the town. Trent McGee and for Henry this morning. Glad to have you along with us. Jim Cecer, the executive director of the United Way of Pitt County, coming up in about 15 minutes from now. But first, the 2015 Eastern Women's Show is coming to the Greenville Convention Center on Friday, April 24th. An event brought to you by the Greenville Pitt County Chamber of Commerce in partnership with Her Magazine and East Carolina's Apparel and Interior Merchandising Organization. The featured speaker for this year's event is award-winning chef Inez Rubastello, owner of On the Square, a one-of-a-kind restaurant located in historic downtown Tarboro. Inez was kind enough to join us via telephone this morning to promote her appearance at the event and tell us a little bit more about her interesting past. Good morning, Inez, and welcome to Talk the Town. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Uh, glad to have you this morning, and I, I, I must say I've been to On the Square quite a few times, and <laughs> I, I, I leave every time going. I was just telling uh, Michael and current in the control room that people people go to restaurants and they say that may have been the best steak or the best so-and-so I've ever had. Every time I've left on the square, I've left saying that was the best, whatever I had that night, that was the best I've ever had. And it's it's the truth. It's it's that good. It's a short drive, certainly from here in Greenville, over there to Tarboro. And uh, I know a lot about Tarboro. My wife works in Tarboro, so I spend a lot of time over there. And um, and so it's a, it's a great, if you've yet to dine out there, I encourage you to go and check it out is worth the short drive to Tarboro to visit on the square. Now, I know before we learn a little more about you, uh, how you got to where you are today, I want to plug your appearance at the upcoming Eastern Women's Show. And without giving too much away, uh, tell us what you'll be speaking on at the event in April. Well, um, <laughs> yeah, or do you, do you even know what you're going to be speaking on? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I do. I, I have a, an outline. I think it's important. Um, to kind of speak about why I came back to Tarboro, right. what drew me back to Eastern North Carolina, and why I'm so happy to be here now, um, and that it is certainly possible to come back to where you were born and make an impact, um, and why it's even more meaningful uh, than uh, if you were in a big city or um, someplace that's like a dream destination. I think it's um, been very impactful for me to come back to the town where I was born and raised and be able to give back to that that wonderful place. So, I agree. Um, I agree. Now, and you you and your husband Stephen opened the restaurant back in 2002, I believe. Right. And uh, again, if you've yet to dine it on the square, you're definitely missing out. Uh, now, you and I, have, uh, we haven't met face to face, and I've been there numerous times. And, and, and the menu differs um, uh, from time to time in uh, uh, different uh, entrees and whatnot, different desserts uh, on, on the nights that you're open for, for lunch and then when you're open for dinner. Uh, for those who are not familiar with your restaurant, how would you best describe On the Square? Well, firstly, my husband is really the award-winning chef. I'm the award-winning wine drinker. Award-winning wine? Okay. Uh, <laughs> my mistake. Sorry, Stephen, no, if you're listening. That was my mistake. No, no. We, um, I actually did move up to New York to go to culinary school, but when I was there, I realized I like to drink more than I like to cook. So, um, <laughs> so I, 
I figured the next best thing was to marry a chef. And <laughs> I, my, my joke about Stephen is that he is half Greek, half Italian. That's not really a joke. That's true. But uh, wish he was Japanese. And so the menu um, changes every week, and it's based on whatever fresh seafood he can get, whatever fresh produce. And he really likes to experiment. Like, he, um, he's doing a Mexican pot roast. Um, that we've never done before, but it's something that he's been researching and um, he's really into. So he really loves to um, study the different cuisines of all backgrounds, and he likes to try to put his uh, recreation on that, sometimes uh, via Southern flavors and sometimes not. Now, you graduated from North Carolina uh, with a degree in journalism and mass communications. Uh, I did as well, although here at ECU. And... uh, (laughs) I, I chose to stay in my profession somewhat. I still, this is not my full-time gig, but you wanted to pursue a career in the culinary arts. So what was the driving force behind you, uh, behind your current profession? Well, the idea was to take that journalism background and go to culinary school and then eventually work for the Food Network um, or possibly even write for a, a food magazine like Food & Wine or Bon Appetit. Um, but it, my, my career took a, a, a definitely a sharp turn um, when I started working in wine and realized that that was really my passion. And that was in 1999. Um, and not a lot of people, certainly not a lot of women, were making um, careers out of wine, but it certainly could be done. And so I was fortunate enough to land an entry-level job um, at Windows on the World at the top of One World Trade Center um, as an assistant seller master. And there I was able to take many, many um, sommelier courses and eventually become a certified sommelier and um, wine steward. So that was um, that was the plan. Now about the only thing I use my journalism degree for is my blog, which is definitely therapy. Yeah, well, I mean, that, that's a good thing to use it for. I was actually reading some of your, um, your blogs uh, last night. And now you uh, talk about how you and Stephen kind of got together. I know you, uh, you mentioned in, in one article, there are numerous articles uh, when you Google your name, Inez, a lot of th- different things come up. Uh, one thing <laughs> I did read last night was that uh, you mentioned that, you know, you, you guys knew you weren't supposed to be dating while you were working, but it's kind of what you did, and that's kind of how things evolved, right? That's right. That's right. He actually is a, um, he is a certified sommelier as well. So we met in the wine department at Windows. Um, we were not supposed to be dating because I was his boss. And that's frowned upon. Um, but after um, you know, after September 11th, everything um, kind of changed, and it came out that we were not only dating, but we were um, seriously considering marriage. And um, the rest is history. <laughs> had he ever heard of Tarboro? <laughs> he had not. <laughs> he had never heard of Tarboro, <laughs> and um, he was actually the one who convinced me to come back. Uh, we came to visit, and he said, you know, it's a lot cheaper to um, own a restaurant in this area than it is in New York. And at the time, he was thinking Raleigh, Durham, or Chapel Hill. Sure, yeah. Um, but we didn't know anyone. You know, the only people we knew were in Tarboro. I hadn't been back for a while. And so um, my, my dad said, you know, please, please do it here. We can make it a destination. Stephen said, well, I'll give you an 18-month commitment, but that's it. And now it's been almost 13 years, so... And you guys are still going strong. Were you ever worried about, because you, you mentioned that, that Stephen, you know, was looking at somewhere like Raleigh, Durham, Cary, Chapel Hill, probably thinking, and I would be too, that the kind of restaurant that you guys have put together and that you own uh, and that is doing great would likely thrive better maybe in those locations. But you come back home to Tarboro, were you concerned that you were going to be able to keep a restaurant like this going? Oh, yeah, we were very concerned. And I think that's... Um that's also a big part of what I want to talk about um, in April is that um, the community of Eastern North Carolina is nothing short of phenomenal. They have been so supportive from Greenville to Rocky Mount, Tarboro, to Roanoke Rapids and Weldon, um, the hockey, everywhere. Um, and, and people have been extremely supportive of our, of our restaurant. And um, while they didn't have to be, um, they are <laughs> essentially the reason that it worked. Um, because of their patronage. So um, that community is something I don't think you can find anywhere else. Now, of course, your career has taken you, as you mentioned, from from Tarboro to Chapel Hill there in college into New York to Atlantic City, and now you're back home in Tarboro. I did read one thing, and you, and you just mentioned this, where you said after 9-11, when you were uh, there, things changed in New York. 
Um, what do you? Of, of course, I know that the city will, will never has never been the same since then uh, to a certain degree. But when you mentioned that things just changed, can you kind of go into a little more details what you mean by that? Sure. I mean, I, I think the city changed, but I, I think I changed also. Um, my priorities were different. Um, you know, while we were up there working at Windows, life was one grand party. Um, just, you know, we were young and carefree and didn't have the responsibilities that we have now. Um, and I think that just changes as life changes. But the city definitely simmered down. Um, probably you know, we stayed until May of 2002. And it was just a quieter, um, more dismal um, not as uh, exuberant type of place. And I think we that's exactly how we were feeling, too. Um, and, uh, you know, now I just went back last month, and it, it's got all of its spirit back for sure. But a, a lot of it. Um, so, you know, time heals. All, uh, time healed most uh, you know, I, I actually visited the 9-11 Memorial Inez uh, a few months ago, and it's remarkable. If you haven't done that, uh, and I know I get you and Stephen, I guess, were, were there. Um, maybe, I guess, not at the uh, World Trade Center when, when all this went down. Where, where were you when, when 9-11 took place? Do you mind me asking you that? No, no. My um, sister had gotten married on the 8th in, um, uh, in Tarboro, and I was at the maid of honor in her wedding. Wow. So, um, I was home for a few days after that, and Stephen was not due in until um, noon that day. So we were both um, very fortunate in, in where we were. Um, and we, we just took the children to the 9-11 Museum in um, January, and it was a really special experience. They, um, they wanted to go, and we, um, they were by far the youngest people in the museum, but um, they really got a lot out of it. I think we spent to two and a half hours in there and um, I think it was good for them to see they've heard you know they've heard things but um, I, I think they've always been a little nervous to ask too much and this kind of put some more light on uh, on the events of 9-11 so we, we were glad we did we it was a it was a somber visit but um we did it. I'm glad we did it. Uh, I, I agree. It's amazing what they've done. Yeah, it really is. And, and I'm, I'm certain it has a, a different kind of effect on uh, someone like you and, and your husband who uh, were there uh, at the time, although not physically there when it, when it took place, but working uh, there and at the World Trade Center. And for me, just going to visit, it goes into so much more detail with what happened. Uh, it, it's it's very, it was just, it's just a great memorial and a museum. And you really should check it out if you're ever in New York. It's worth the 30 bucks, whatever it is, a ticket to go do that. Because I wait, we spent two, uh, roughly two or two and a half hours in there looking at everything you can see, and it's it's a almost a step by step what took place, and just to see, you know, to, to actually see that fire engine, you know that yeah. that you know that you that you have that image of in your mind to see that to see how the police cars and the ambulances were dead, it's just I mean, everything is it, it's it's amazing. Um, well, uh, Inez, again, you're going to be here in April on the 24th at the Eastern Women's Show uh, on the square open for lunch Monday through Friday, 11 to 3, Thursday, Friday, Saturday for dinner from 530 until 10. I believe uh, we took my mom there for her birthday <laughs> last June. Then they took a family friend. My wife frequents their lunch quite a bit working right there in Tarboro. And uh, it is, it's fabulous. It really, really is. So congrats on all of your success and to Stephen as well. Yeah, yeah. It's, Thank uh, you so much. And I really am looking forward to being there in April. We'll Thanks look forward to having you. And uh, it's, it's the Eastern Women's Show. I don't know if many men will be in attendance, but I hope all the women listening <laughs> will certainly get out and hear Inez speak coming up on the 24th. Hey, thanks for your time this morning, Inez. And if I get by the restaurant soon, I'll introduce myself to you face-to-face, -face, okay? Please do, Trent. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Take care. It's Inez Rubastello. Uh, owner and chef of On the Square, along with her husband, Stephen. A uh, great little venue there in Tarboro. So we'll take a timeout, come back. Jim Cecer, the executive director of the United Way of Pitt County. More on their capital campaign coming up here. Uh, it's 29 past the hour. Stop making high interest payments and swap into a new Toyota with a lower interest rate at Greenville Toyota. During the One for Everyone sales event, get the Greenville Toyota Advantage. Oil changes, tire rotations, and courtesy shuttle service for life. Rush over to Greenville Toyota today. Stallings Mobile and Mini Storage Company is locally owned and operated serving all of Pitt and surrounding counties. Stallings Storage has all the standard sizes and also offers 20 by 40 units with 12 by 12 doors for all your large storage needs. Stalling Storage is the only local company providing mobile units 8x15, 8x10, or 5x8 delivered to your site. 
They deliver, pick up, and store it for you. It's that easy. No need to send your business out of town when your mobile storage needs can be met right here with people that you know. Hi, I'm Eddie Stallings, Stallings Mobile and Mini Storage. I'd like to invite you all out to visit our facility, check out our mobile storage units. We can bring them out to your home or business, leave them, let you fill them up, bring them back and store them, or take them to your next site. Please call us at 321-2300 or visit our website, stallingsstorage.com. And as always, we are Pirates Supporting Pirates. Go Pirates! I'm Henry Hinton. You've heard me talk over the years about how much I love being a patient of Dr. Thomas McIntosh. I love Carolina Vision Care because I can get my glasses in their optical department right on site. They've got one of the largest selections of frames anywhere and an in-house optical lab run by opticians that can make glasses many times in about an hour. And they accept most vision plans and insurances. And for people without vision insurance, they have their own vision plan that will save you money. Carolina Vision Care, we keep what's important inside. My prescription refills. My son shot records. My doctor's appointments. My lab results. My parents care. My chart. Vident My Chart. Vident My Chart is the secure online patient portal that lets you manage your health your way. Visit VidentMyChart.com or call 1 855 MyVident to learn how you can sign up. And now, homemade made easy with Anne. Spend more time with the family, not in the kitchen with this quick recipe. Boil water. Add Anne's chicken base and butter. Add Anne's flat pastry dumplings. Add pre-cooked chicken. Add flour to thicken. Season with salt and pepper. Done. Homemade, made easy. Look for this label at your local grocer or annsdumplings.com for more ideas. Stop making high interest payments and swap into a new Toyota with a lower interest rate at Greenville Toyota. During the One for Everyone sales event, get the lower interest rate and payments as low as $159 a month. Give Greenville Toyota just 15 minutes and we can lower your payment. Thirty-two past the hour, March twenty-fifth, Wednesday's Talk of the Town. Trent McGee in for Henry this morning. He'll be back tomorrow. Don't forget Talk of the Town live on location on Friday at Krispy Kreme, where every dollar from uh, uh, the uh, one dollar from every dozen donuts sold will be donated to the local American Red Cross, and we're going to be sampling some great uh, new spring donuts coming up on Friday's Talk of the Town. Joining me right now, though, is the executive director of the United Way of Pitt County, Mr. Jim Ciesler. And Jim, uh, I feel like I see you quite a bit because you and I kind of cross paths at various events uh, throughout uh, the month and throughout the year. So it's good to see you this morning. How are you? Just fine. Just fine. Glad to Beautiful have you. Beautiful morning out there. It, it is. It is. It's good to see some, you know, the weather's been up and down, up and down, up and down. Well, so. and, and just as I got out of the car in the parking lot, and I get that smell of fresh cut grass, the guy is. Yeah. Kind of like, you know, spring kinda like is, yeah, spring is Spring coming. is here. Spring, spring is, is here. Coming. Uh, Jim, before we uh, delve into uh, why you're here today, let's just assume that the listeners are not familiar with the United Way of Pitt County. So tell us what the mission is and the kind of impact you guys hope to have on the community. All right. Um, well, the United Way's goal, the United Way Pitt County's goal, is to create lasting change by addressing underlying root causes of community problems. I mean, historically, we were a fundraising organization that funded social services. We still do that. Um, we still provide a safety net of basic need services. We fund programs like the shelter, like the Red Cross. Mm -hmm. and, um, the domestic violence shelter and so forth. But we're also looking at a bigger picture and trying to tackle the issue of strengthening family in Pitt County. I've been in the business for over 30 years, three years here. If there is a silver bullet on a lot of the social ser social issues that we're facing, it's, it's really, we need to strengthen the family structure, you know, or the negative spin on that is the decrease in mm -hmm. family um, has really hurt. Um, we do that by focusing on two issues, school success and workforce development. So um, <clears throat> we know that we all win when a child succeeds in school. 
you know, you hear you know, a lot of people say, well, my kids are gone, they're graduated, what do I care? No, there's an economic impact, economic development impact um, in terms of a quality public school education. And we are focusing on, on efforts that help move that agenda along. And, and to achieve those, I, I, I think you would agree, the school <coughs> success and a, a qualified workforce, all of that is, would not happen, would not, would not be possible, I think, without uh, success really in the home and with the family first. It starts with, there, Jim. It, That's where it, it starts. It I think you have to nail on the head. Does. It, it yeah. completely does. And uh, again, the, the investments that we make um, are, are focused on doing just that, helping that child, you know, None of us are born into this world lazy or you know, with poor habits. Um, that is all learned behavior. And the flip side of that is um, by quality, early learning, um, parenting, and so forth, good parenting, um, we can make a difference. We can make a big difference. And, and, and you guys make it a, a difference right now in all that you do, all that you get behind uh, when it comes to uh, education events and, and things throughout the community. You guys support everything that you can uh, because, again, uh, your goal is to make that, uh, create that lasting change uh, by addressing those kinds of issues that you just mentioned. Now, right now, you guys are kind of in the middle or I guess maybe on the back end of, that, you, uh, of, of your yes. campaign right now, right, Jim. Right. And um, so you're still uh, trying to get some funds because you can't do what you do, of course, without being – funded that's that's the the reality of the world yeah um and and you know really trent uh, my message today is the, the my message is there's good news and there's bad news the good news is that for the last seven or eight years since 2007 or so the united way has helped this community increase our graduation rate seven years ago graduation rate was 54 percent just about half of the kids were graduating um, now it's up to 82%. And a lot of the investments that we've made over the last five or six years have helped contribute to that. We've helped hundreds of kindergarten, first, second grade kids receive tutoring to get their reading up to grade level. Um, we've supported safe places for students to go to after school and in the summer um, that are focused on education. Um, thousands of students to have received that service. Um, and we've helped over 800 middle school students stay on track to graduate. Um, the bad news, the bad news is um, our campaign this year, our fundraising campaign is tracking down. We're tracking, we're estimating anywhere between 80 and $100,000 down from last year. And that impact, that would seriously cripple a lot of the community efforts that have been going forward and creating the success or allowing for the success that we've had. Um, just, you know, one example, we're at risk of cutting over 500 students from our academic after school summer camp tutoring and mentoring programs. Mm -hmm. um, we're at risk of completely cutting out our character education program for over 800 at risk kids. We fund both the Girl Scouts and the Boy Scouts, but we don't fund um, Girl Scouts or Boy Scouts for your children or for my children, because you know what? We can pay for that. But to provide that kind of character building service for at-risk kids who don't have the kind of supports at home perhaps or whatever, that really um, is making a difference and an impact. And those are the kinds of things that are at risk right now um, if we have to cut back because of our shortfall. How would you, how would you define, Jim, an at-risk kid, someone that just doesn't have always not privileged to have the kind of family structure that say maybe you and I had growing up doesn't have that mother father figure in the home that can really help them teach them and, and, and mold them how would you define well that? I, 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 I think really the, the the variable is 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 economic um, I, you know and, and there's great low-income parents but when you're a single mom with two kids or three kids working three jobs you know how much parenting can you do it's tough sure. you're just you know you're just paying the bills right okay so we're not talking about just you know, at-risk kids who are from the quote bad families or whatever no there are kids who are at risk um for, for those other kinds of reasons but i i would say that really the the description is um socioeconomic in particular economic um as you know those kids um 
and what we're saying is, you know, let's give all kids a chance. And that's that's the message too. Um, let's give all kids a chance. And, and you to mentioned uh, you mentioned a, a number of programs you guys support uh, and uh, the after school summer programs for girls, uh, the after school t- uh, tutorial program, the community outreach program, middle school academic program, the uh, multicultural STEM outreach. Uh, a number of, uh, you can go on and on and on with, with all that you guys get right. behind. But right now, funding is 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 down. I guess to continue with that bad news, funding down from where it was at this point last year, I presume. Yes, yes. And so you guys well, are certainly still looking uh, to bring some funds in, uh, Jim. What's what's the best way that someone who is interested in learning more about how to give and where the money goes? Uh, how can they find out more information about that? Well, the best place to get more information is to go online to our, our, our website, uh, which is www.uwpcnc. It's a long one. Yeah, yeah but it's United Way, Pitt mm-hmm. County, yep. North Carolina, uwpcnc.org. Um, and you can go online and get more information about the United Way. Um, and also, and you know, this is my other message today, is you can go online to make a contribution. And, and we need help. We, we need the community's help to not have to make those kinds of cuts that we're, we're looking at. And, and again, you guys are right now uh, uh, on the back end of your campaign. Uh, w- when does the actual fundraising portion of this campaign end? Well... Because I guess anyone can really donate to, to, to the United Way anytime you want you to. You can donate anytime during the year. Um, we are, our fiscal year, our grants and all our spending um, starts July 1. Um, we make those, our board makes the grants decisions in May. So, you know, we're going to take a look at where we are at the end of April to see how much money we have to invest in these various programs and services. So with that context, the campaign ends um, the end of April. Okay. And, uh, you know, we actually heard, uh, I was in a, a little session with, with John Bacon, uh, who works there uh, with you guys at the United Way. Uh, and, and he was talking about some of these th- same things. And John's a director of development there for you guys. And uh, it, people probably, I think people hear the name United Way of Pitt County, but they have no idea of all that you do and, and the right. impact that you make and the number of programs that you support and get behind. And really, you said it the way you guys uh, help and provide for the at-risk kids uh, is remarkable. So, but again, you just, as you said, it's the reality. You need financial help to be able to do that kind yes, of thing. Yes, we do. So, and, and, you know, I mean, uh, we would suggest that, that an investment in the United Way, you, you, you know you're going to have impact. We're going to invest only in programs that work and that have an impact on those two issues, workforce development and school success. So the money that you donate certainly is going back into the community to have uh, uh, really, Jim, a, a lasting a lasting impact. It, that's what's going to change, you know, change the community condition. Um, uh, again, our gifts, also you make a contribution, you know, the, we are a 501c3 organization, it is uh, tax exempt, um, and you can go online and make the, a contribution, or you can call our office, our phone number is 758-1604. And you could reach me at extension 205 or John Bacon at extension 209. Just give us a call. You can make a pledge and we will send you reminder statements on payment of that pledge. You can spread it out. You can make a credit card we, uh, payment, um, a monthly bank draft, whatever. We will work with you um, on, on that. Um, but we do need your support. Or come by 226. West 8th Street, uh, Sweet B yes. here in Greenville. Come by, drop a donation off. And again, yes. Jim just gave you the phone number. You can reach them there via phone, and you can visit online at uwpcnc.org. Uh, give back. Uh, you guys uh, you guys are a, a valuable, valuable organization and resource uh, here in Pitt County, as United Ways are all across the country. So thanks for all that you're doing, and uh, best of luck as you guys continue with your campaign. Thank you. Good to see you, as always. Good to see you. Jim Cecil, Executive Director of the United Way of Pitt County here with their campaign. We'll like continue to promote the need to give back to uh, the United Way moving forward. We'll take a time out here. It's, 40, uh, it's 16 before the top of the hour. I never... Is it time for a new car or truck? Welcome to East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Come on inside. It is Ram Truck Month and we have over 100 new Rams for you to choose from. That is the largest selection in the East. You also want to check out the new lineup of Jeeps from the Wrangler to the new Grand Cherokee. Jeep is the hottest brand on the market this spring and we've got a great selection to choose from. We'll see you at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville.
Gordon's Golf and Ski, carrying all the top names in skiing, snowboarding, and golf for over 44 years. Stop in Gordon's for some cool winter savings. Snowboard and ski pants, coats and bibs, all 40% off. With spring just around the corner, Gordon's is getting you ready for the link. Golf shirts, 50% off. Golf shoes, 30% off. Gordon's service department will get you back on the course with the fastest golf repair in town. Receive a free hat and glove with any purchase over $150 only at Gordon's Golf and Ski, Greenville. Hey everybody, guess who's never danced with a girl before? Yeah, this guy. Come on buddy, on the 2-4. 2-4. There you go. At Shaw Floors, we know the little moments matter. They're why we work so hard to put a carpet beneath his feet that's as awesome as he is. Boyd's Carpet, 115 West Fire Tower Road in Winterville. Call them at 321-7066. And now, homemade made easy with Ann. Spend more time with the family, not in the kitchen with this quick recipe. Boil water, add Ann's chicken base and butter, add Ann's flat pastry dumplings, add pre-cooked chicken, add flour to thicken, season with salt and pepper. Done, homemade, made easy. Look for this label at your local grocer or annsdumplings.com for more ideas. could win an out of the blue party with rock stars like fallout boy follow us on twitter and hashtag out of the blue with a picture of pepsi this isn't a park and there is no game of fetch these boys are here on business and this is their office if you have hunting dogs in pitt county you should know that we're working just as hard to provide for them as they are for you as part of the new canine control ordinance, dogs actively involved in training, field trials, or seasonal hunting do not have to be under physical restraint when on your property or property you lawfully occupy. To learn how the law applies to your hunting dogs, just visit our website, pittcountync.gov. We are uh, on the final lap here of this Wednesday Talk at the Town. Trent McGee in for Henry this morning. If you're just tuning in, I want to thank, uh, again, Inez Rubastello, who is owner and chef of On the Square. She is coming to the 2015 Eastern Women's Show on the 24th of April at the Greenville Convention Center uh, to be the featured speaker there. And Jim Ceasler, the executive director of the United Way of Pitt County, who right now they need some help, people. Uh, we need the community to give back and support the United Way for all that they give back to the community and for the number of different programs uh, as it relates to education uh, and workforce development that they get behind the United Way. Certainly a very, very beneficial and important resource right here in Pitt County. So they, they need your help when it comes to funding. And uh, you just heard the number of ways you can reach out to the United Way online, stop by their location, or you can call Jim and the gang right there uh, at the United Way of Pitt County, 252-758-1604. Um, let's see. Tomorrow, uh, Sweet 16 play. And this will be a good segue into sports. Sweet 16 play tomorrow. North Carolina, Wisconsin tip off at 747. Still not sure as to whether or not Kennedy Meeks, UNC sophomore forward, will play tomorrow. He did practice, but on Tuesday there, at USC's practice facility, right now they're on the West Coast. And uh, I mentioned this in hour number one. We tried to get Eric Montross, former Tar Heel, former NBA player and current color analyst for the Tar Heel Sports Network, to come on this morning. But And I don't blame Eric because I tried to get Eric on at 745, and, which would have been in 440 time, L.A. time. And uh, he said, that might be a little tough for me. And I said, yeah, you're probably right, uh, Eric. So that uh, couldn't quite coordinate the times there, but Eric was certainly willing to come on with us. Had it been a little bit later, but that's where the Tar Heels are right now. They'll be taking on a very good and experienced Wisconsin team tomorrow night. That game is set for 747. Will more likely be right around 8 o'clock when the Badgers and the Tar Heels tip off tomorrow night. And NC State and Louisville will get underway uh, Friday night. And that game uh, sometime, too, in the 7 o'clock hour. Now, Wisconsin's a six-point favorite over the Tar Heels coming up tomorrow night. And I, I think that's about right. I picked North Carolina to beat Wisconsin 
in my bracket, in one of my brackets, actually in both my brackets, I did. So I, I think, I do think they match up well, despite what some may say. And I think if North Carolina is playing good basketball, uh, they can, they can beat Wisconsin, but you have to be really, really good to beat Frank Kaminsky and company. I think, but uh, you know, Bo Ryan, this could be a special kind of year for Bo Ryan. He, he, he's, he needs it. And this could be the team that can get it done. Certainly led by the big, uh, Frank Kaminsky. He read a good article on, on him over the weekend and, and how he really developed into the kind of player he is because he wasn't what he is going back to his high school days, later, even later high school years. Uh, but he's certainly one of the best right now in the country, likely, I think, to win the Wooden Award. Uh, NIT scores from Tuesday night in Miami. Uh, the five, I believe there are five seed, maybe a three seed, the NIT. They edged Richmond, who is a number one seed, 63-61, and Stanford got by Vanderbilt, 78-75. to After nine seasons in Tempe, Arizona, uh, Sun Devils head basketball coach Herb Sendek has been fired by the university. Of course, Sendek was the former NC State head coach. He finished 159 and 137 there with the Sun Devils. So Herb Sendek Looking for a job. He'll probably get latched back on with someone here pretty soon. Wake Forest has suspended junior college or junior guard Madison Jones from all basketball-related activities for undisclosed reasons. Coach Danny Manning made that announcement on Tuesday. And on the diamond on Tuesday, a three-run home run in the second inning lifted UNC Wilmington to a 4-2 win over East Carolina. The second consecutive loss for the Pirates. A Charlie Jorgen solo shot in the first put the Pirates ahead early. But the Seahawks got a Chris Gaffney three-run shot in the second, dead center, and that was all that the Seahawks needed to secure that win. The Pirates fall to 16-9, and return to action today, hosting High Point, 6:30 first pitch tonight. It's the first of seven consecutive home games for East Carolina. Again, 6:30 tonight inside Clark LeClaire Stadium. So get out tonight, enjoy what should be a good weather night as some Pirate baseball on the diamond. High Point comes in 11-11. and but, of course, the Pirates 1-3 now in their last four games heading into tonight's contest, looking for win number 17 on the season. So good luck to Coach Goblin and company as they take on High Point. At your sports update here, we're at uh, nine minutes before 8 o'clock. Again, Talk of the Town live on location this Friday at Krispy Kreme. And we'd love to have you come out. And I was looking to see, too, I can try and pull it up here really quick, who might be currently leading our battle, 94.3 The Game's Battle of the Brackets contest. I know a lot of uh, people who took part in that, and the winner, of course, receiving a uh, it, it's a two-night uh, airfare for two, four-night stay there in Las Vegas. Aren't you leading unofficially? Uh, unofficially, Mike. Unofficially. 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 Aren't you leading? It. That's it. And uh, right now, yeah, it was a sheet of integrity. I actually mentioned right. this earlier in the week. I ran this down. I just forgot who it was. Sheet of integrity right now is on top. And uh, Ashley's bracket, John's bracket, Will's bracket, and then TLH Tar Heel win. Tar Heels win. If you're any of those people, uh, you're in uh, looking uh, pretty good right now with uh, the Sweet 16, of course, the Elite Eight, and the Final Four left. As I just flipped to find that, I just saw... Congratulations, Heather King, WITN. She has had her third child, and I was wrong. I said it was going to be a girl. It's a boy. And it's a boy. Did you know that, Mike? No, I did not. Charles Robert. What a great name. That is. A.K.A. Charlie, born 1205, 8 pounds, 5 ounces, 19 inches. And uh, according to Heather's post here, everyone doing great. So congratulations to Heather King and her husband, Chris. Of course, Heather typically joins us on Thursdays from WITN. Uh, won't be with us for the next few Thursdays, obviously, with the new addition to the family. But a beautiful young boy uh, and Charles Robert. Great name as well. So congratulations to Heather King. Michael said it was going to be a girl. I think Henry may have said it was going to be a boy. Yeah, I don't remember. I think he may have. Yeah, I, th but I think I, he did. I thought it was going to be a girl. And it wasn't, so what do I know? So there you go. Uh, anyway, but uh, happy that she has now had her little boy and uh, two girls and a boy. Whew, that's Hey, I, it's tough with one boy and one girl. I can't imagine uh, two, two and one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, again, congrats to, uh, to Heather King from WITN on her newborn little boy. Um, that's going to just about do it here for us, Mike. I don't think I missed anything else. Again, Talk of the Town, uh, live on location this Friday, Krispy Kreme, 7 to 9. Stop by and see us. Oh, I know what I forgot to mention. And, and Henry asked me to pump this up. And what was I? Also at Krispy Kreme on Friday. Yeah, the football team. That's right. Yep. That's right. Uh, 
the wild, and I don't, I, of course, I don't remember this. Uh, I, I wasn't around, but I've certainly heard a, a lot of, a lot of uh, talk about that wild dog defense that East Carolina had back in the day. Coming up at Krispy Kreme on Friday, a ECU uh, coach, Carl, former Pirate uh, coach, Carl Reese, and the Wild Dog defense live at Krispy Kreme. That should be a lot of fun coming up on Friday. Of course, that defense was really, really good. Uh, one of the best ever, I think, here at ECU. And members of that Wild Dog defense, I'm not exactly sure who's going to be on location with us on Friday, but members of that Wild Dog defense at Krispy Kreme on Friday, uh, plus former ECU coach Carl Reese there with us. So that should be a lot of fun um, there on Friday. Should have a great crowd for that. And I should have mentioned that earlier on in the show, and I forgot to do that, and that was my, my mistake. I was so taken back by the actual new donuts that we're going to be sampling as well. Um, and that will be one of the highlights for me on Friday. Again, the chick donut, the delicious egg donut, a chocolate iced ring with spring, spring and spring. Fired sprinkles, Mike. I might just take off right now and go have me one. Might so, as well. Might as They're well. They're there now. So again, yeah, a lot coming up on Friday, and Henry will be back tomorrow uh, here on Talk of the Town. So if you if, are familiar with, remember that Wild Dog defense. Uh, come out and uh, shake these guys' hands and say hello to them on Friday at Krispy Kreme. What seven year? What year did they play? Do you have any idea? Uh, I'd have to look it up, Mike. I, okay. I don't know off the top We're of my head. Talking seventy or uh, early yeah, 70s? yeah. Okay. Um, so it was. It was you know, and I actually heard about, um, you know, it, it was, it, it was, they were a stingy defense, man. I, and I heard a lot about this wild dog defense. I think the early 70s, 72. Okay. Um, that makes sense. Yeah. So I think 72, 73. And, um, you know, that, those were some good years for pirate football for sure. And um, I know they had a couple of shutouts that year. And, um, but um, yeah, boy, that was, a, that was a tough defense. And, and Henry remembers that defense quite well. So uh, we'll have some of those guys there with us on location on Friday. Thanks again to Inez Rubastello, to Jim Cecil, to Carly Swain with WITN, to Michael Busimi in the studio. I'm Trent McGee. Today, again, a high of 70 degrees. Should be a great day. Get out there and enjoy it because the rain is coming in for tomorrow and it's going to last uh, for the next couple of days. Moving out for the weekend, though, but today should be great. Again, with a high of 70, get out and support some pirate baseball. We will see you on Thursday. Enjoy your Wednesday, everyone. Stop making high interest payments and swap into a new Toyota with a lower interest rate at Greenville Toyota. During the One for Everyone sales event, get the lower interest rate and payments as low as $159 a month. Give Greenville Toyota just 15 minutes and we can lower your payment. What if you could make this or this with less of this and definitely less of this and without this? Let Ann show you how with this. A great taste without the guesswork. Add Ann's chicken, vegetable, ham, or beef base to a variety of dishes. Deviled eggs, potato salad, and even coleslaw are taken to a whole new level by using Ann's The One dressing. Or easily liven up your favorite meat or seafood with Ann's The One sauce. Homemade, made easy. Look for this label at your local grocer or annsdumplings.com for more ideas. When you're on the go, it's Trade Wilco. No matter where you go in Eastern Carolina, there's sure to be an attractive and always clean Trade Wilco Hess station nearby. For the absolute lowest prices on gas, groceries, and travel necessities, stop at any of the Trade Wilco Hess stations throughout Eastern Carolina. Keep your eyes on the road, but remember to look for the green and white Hess sign. The best part? No one supports the ECU Pirates more. So when you're on the go, it's Trade Wilco. Look at you two, taking a flying leap off the high dive of life and starting your own home business and nailing it. The term busy is just taking on a whole new meaning. At Shaw Floors, we love busy. It's why we work so hard to put a resilient floor beneath your feet that's as awesome as you are. Boyd's Carpet, 115 West Fire Towel Road in Winterville. Call them at 321-7066. Are you a bargain hunter always looking for the best deals in Greenville? Start your hunt on Saturday, April 25th at the St. James UMC Spring Fling Yard Sale. This massive yard sale opens at 6.30 and is the start of a day-long event with a plant sale, bake sale, craft bazaar, and live auction at 5. All proceeds benefit local charities. So come join our St. James family on April 25th at 2000 East 6th Street for unique finds, great bargains, and excellent food. For more information, call 752-6154 or visit stjconnect.com. 
Uptown Greenville is the voice of the downtown. We exist to promote quality, cultural, residential, and economic development. I am Uptown. I am Uptown. I am Uptown. It's alive. Safe. It's awesome. A great place to work. We are Uptown. We are Uptown. We are Uptown. Student at East Carolina University, co-founder of eAudit.com. Sergeant with the Center City Unit. Owner of the Varsity Club. Our downtown has a name, and it's Uptown. I'm good like that. Stop making high interest payments and swap into a new Toyota with a lower interest rate at Greenville Toyota during the One for Everyone sales event. Get the Greenville Toyota Advantage, oil changes, tire rotations, and courtesy shuttle service for life. Rush over to Greenville Toyota today.